2,000 years ago, when Cyrus, King of Kings, Lord of the Medes and Persians, ruled half the world, his warriors trained for battle like this. Today, this has become a ceremony of physical training with an almost religious meaning. This club weighs, well, it's far too heavy for me anyway. These men are in a Zohane in Tehran. A Zohane is a wrestling place. You might compare it to Jack Solomon's gymnasium in London. But it's not all cauliflower ears and muscles. They combine this great sport with one of the gentler arts, the art of poetry. I was very surprised to find the portrait of a poet above me in the place of honor. No, not Omar Khayyam, but Ferdowsi, Persia's greatest poet. What's left of his ancient Persia? It's a couple of steps back to the 20th century and of a million super shark-finned American roadster. Hmm, London buses, but right-handed. Traffic's a bit of a problem. There are so many different things to control. Veiled women and the Shada of the harem because they prefer to stick to the old customs. They go shopping with unveiled women in high heels and light summer dresses. They're heading, like us, for the bazaar. Outside, there's a car park and modern frontage. But once I went in, I found it showed few signs of change. No mass production here. He's his own shop steward. And this is Persia's adding machine, an abacus which first came from China and which an expert can work faster than a modern computer. And of course, the carpets. The flying carpet is a legend of the past. This man's load is for export only. This one's brand new, but it's been laid out on the ground for people to walk on. It fetches a higher price when the pile has been compressed. In Persia, old carpets are often more valuable than new, and the repairman has a full-time job. Clipping is a skill of immense precision. This new carpet has a million stitches in a square yard. It'll take about six months to finish. About the same time as it takes to put up a new building in Tehran. There's live music while you work. Wooden scaffolding. 
and the water for the cement arrives in a horse-drawn cart. A few years ago, these houses weren't here. The old Tehran, first built up by Shah Aga Mohammed, the eunuch king, is rapidly growing into a modern capital of an industrial state. Millions of bricks are cut out of the earth to make this progress. It's so hot now in Tehran that they can almost bake them outside. As well as bricks, development needs money, and much of Persia's money comes from the oil industry. I went to the National Iranian Oil Company, which develops new fields and coordinates the work of the consortium of foreign companies. And there I met the chairman, Mr. Abdullah Entizam. Would you say that the nationalization of oil has helped in the social advancement of Iran? As you know, the revenue of oil, nearly most of it has been used and is being used for the social advancement of Iran and for the development of economic projects. In what ways is the industry expanding? The consortium agreement is working and you know is expanding about 10 percent each year and beside that we have joint venture, venture with different companies. We have one company with the Italians, one with the Americans and beside that we are doing work ourselves. Probably you have heard about the gas reserve of Sarajev in that way, we are looking for the expansion for the future. Mr. Entizam, is there still plenty of oil under the ground of Iran? Yes, there is plenty of oil. As you know, about 300,000 square miles of sedimentary basin exists in Iran, and the consortium area agreement is 100,000 square miles. And why not? The pumps have some of the cheapest petrol in the world. How much? Two bob a gallon. Many cars have a prayer or holy picture displayed inside. And when you go on a car journey in Tehran, it's customary and wise to say a prayer beforehand. Most of the people are Muslims. <laughs> These students, the mullahs, have come to train as priests. They're a great contrast to the thousands of young people who go to the modern university for training in science and the arts. Many of these students have made the pilgrimage to Mecca, and we were there for the feast of Gorbani. <laughs> During this feast, families who have been to Mecca sacrifice a sheep in their gardens and give the meat to the poor outside. The vet checks the sheep is healthy. This ceremony comes from biblical times when the archangel stopped Abraham sacrificing his son and substituted the ram from the thicket. The sheep's head is cut right off so we won't show you anymore. But outside, the clothes of the Bible are still seen in the streets. Here, in this modern square, I found once again a statue of the man we first saw in the gymnasium, Ferdosi. You can't get away from the past or poets in Persia. Everyone there can quote from the epic poems of Ferdosi and the romantic ballads of Omar Khayyam. Awake for morning in the bowl of night has flung the stone that puts the stars to flight.
In the new Blossom Club, there's a real Arabian dancer, and you can watch someone who might have danced for Omar Khayyam himself. This then is Tehran, the dancers dance as they used to a thousand years ago.